You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Marion's Path, Changeling Tale, or if you prefer, Changeling Tale, Marion's Path. So, the last place we left off, we had just had a very nice picnic with Marion and her sister Grace, and Malcolm decided to be more forthcoming with uh, Marion, and they both decided to, you know, talk about their lives with each other, get to know each other better, and, you know... All leading up to the moment where you put a ring on her finger. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I might be getting ahead of myself here. Okay, anyway. All right, sit back and enjoy. Hope you guys enjoy. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the next 20 minutes. Let me entertain you. And alarm chain, you are up. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> she took off down the rutted desire path. The rutted desire path. What is a rutted desire path? Can someone in the comments tell me what this is? I have no idea what that is. She takes off down the rutted desire path towards her home. I watch every measured step she takes. Still feeling within my soul the touch of her body. She looks back, smiles, and my heart melts. Oh, The rutted desire path. What is a... What the fuck is that? Alright, transitioning. Okay, so we completely skipped the evening, and we're going right towards the next day. <coughs> Okay. Gran! Another day gone, another task behind me. I sit at the dinner table, my belly full, my mind finally at peace after last week's rigmarole. It's hard to believe a week has already passed since returning to Bonnie, Scotland, to home. After finishing repairs on the second, thankfully final roof of the Campbell farm, Gran has treated me to quite a feast. Guilt over yesterday's service may also have contributed to the expanded menu. I don't blame Gran for what happened one bit, but I do plan on giving it some time before attending church again. She seems to understand. The old woman sits across from me, sipping tea and sharing the latest gossip from the congregation. It feels good to relax, unwind, and let her words wash over me. So, Maggie Tite tells me the Latchies, you remember the Latchies down the valley? She says they've been waking up to find cows rolled head over hoof scattered about their farm all willy-nilly. Huh. Unthinkable. Maggie Tite thinks it's Rabinus Rascals. She says to me, she says, they're not tipping them out in the fields. Can you believe it? Rabinus wee goblins. I didn't think they had. They had. I didn't think. I didn't. Blah. I didn't think they had the brawn. Hmm. Scandal, Nochna Craig. It will vie for the tree. It will. It will vie with the treaty negotiations for top spot. The national headlines for sure. The poor innocent beasties. Why would someone do a thing like that? One will get injured one of these days. Mark my word. One of the herd, or one of Rabina's brood. If fate is just, the latter. <laughs> Gran looks like she is about to continue her rant, and there is a sharp knock on the door. Malcolm? Exchange looks with Gran, and my heart races again. Marion is back at the front door, at this hour. Malcolm, help me! Oh no. I run to the door and open it, and she nearly falls into my arms. It's Jessie! She's gone! What do you mean? I immediately think the worst. Marion must notice my face drop and corrects my thoughts. She's left town! Going to the city! She left a note! What? When? Marion holds a slip of paper which she hands me. Dear Marion and Grace, I have to go. My heart is no longer in this tiny village. It is holding me back. I am holding myself back. I am leaving for Glasgow and hope to be settled by the end of the year. Do forgive me for my sudden disappearance. Know that I love you both and don't want you worrying about me. I've only left so quickly so as to not be stopped in the, in the pursuit of my dreams. I will write when I am able. Yours, Jesse. P.S. Please forgive me for taking Mother's silver locket. Oh. When did she leave? Last night? Today? I don't know! I spoke with her after she got to the pub from, uh, got home from the pub last night. We argued, but we always argue. I went to bed, couldn't sleep. I never heard her leave. When I didn't see her this morning, I just assumed she went to work. Later, while tidying her room, I found the note and... Oh, Malcolm, I never guessed she would just up and leave. Not without at least saying goodbye. Please, please help me find her and get her home. She's as desperate as she is distraught. It makes me want to console her and tell her what she wants to hear. No. What? Rain's jaw goes slack and fresh tears start welling in her eyes. It pains me to say it, but she needs a friend right now, an honest one. A new family. 
You said you would be there for us. I am here for you. Jessie chose to leave. She is an adult. She's a child, a little girl in a trampy dress. You have to let her go. And what? Forget about her. No, let her live her life, her dream. She's a lost soul. She'll wander. She'll fail. She could be so easily manipulated or worse. It's like I told you. You can't save everyone. No, Malcolm. You couldn't save everyone. What? I need to get to the city. You need to let go. Give up. I wouldn't call it that. I can't. Malcolm, I can't give up. I can't lose her. Marion's body stiffens and she looks as though she will faint. Her face is white. There's nothing we can do. Find her. It's impossible now. I'm terrified for her, for what father will think when he comes home to find her missing, gone. She'll be all right, Marion. She's not gone forever. She'll reach out to you as soon as she can. Why? Why did she leave? Her heart isn't here. Maybe it never was. Don't say that. I don't I don't want to save her. I want her to want I want her to want to be safe. She'll figure that out. And if she doesn't? Maybe she'll come home. She pauses, deflated. Her confidence is gone. She stands before me, defenseless. I can't let her go, Malcolm. Her weeping continues. Why not? Jessie wants this. This is her dream coming true. Why can't we be happy for her? I'm scared! Marion sobs quiet down and I place a hand on her shoulder. I'm scared that one day... Her head falls onto my chest and I can barely hear her whispers. I might stop worrying about them and that would make me an awful person. I'll never be able to live with the guilt if I stop caring about her. I don't want to be alright with forgetting my sisters. I pet her head and she looks up at me. You can't do that to yourself. You have to give yourself credit for taking care of your sisters for so long. I failed them. You've done everything right. They're adults now, women with free will. Their decisions are their own. I try to guide her into the house. Please, come in. <clears throat> Malcolm, your voice is so different. <laughs> Please, come in and sit down for a while. You need to rest. To calm down. I wasn't going to say that. You could have some tea. But your grandmother, I don't want to disturb her. Let's sit in the garden, then. She won't hear a peep. Mm -hmm. Poor Marion. I'm... I agree with Malcolm. Jessie has got to live her own life. She's a grown woman now. She wants to get out in the world. When a duck inside to assure Grand that everything is all right, she, of course, insists that Marion come in. It takes some convincing, but I'm finally able to secure a, secure a pot of tea and a pair of quilts and some privacy. Wishing Grand a good night, I return outside. Oh, what complicated lives we lead. Even though the sun has set, it's unseasonably warm tonight. Marion and I find a nook in the rock wall, lay out the quilts and sit comfortably among the silhouetted flowers. We sip tea together, and quietly reminisce about Jessie when she was younger, simpler times. You might not remember, but a long time ago your grand bought us all of us girls supplies to make dolls. Swaths of colorful cotton, needles, threads, buttons, the works. Jessie tried her hand at the craft, but, well, she ended up sewing her own shirt to the doll. Your grand helped untangle her, but Jessie was bound and determined to not quit. She kept sewing through the night, and we woke to find her patching together squares of fabric. Marion tugs at the quilt. This is what she had started. This quilt. Jessie didn't know it at the time, but Grace and I helped her along. It took us nearly a year to finish, but finish we did. Of course I remember. You gave grand this quilt for her birthday many years back. Marion heaves a heavy sigh and looks up at me, seemingly relieved. I honestly can't believe you remembered that. Gran has always loved you girls, I think. I consider my words carefully. I think Gran always wished my father had married someone as loving as you. You've always helped others. She blushes. She blushes. My sisters and I have always been a team. I just always felt left in charge. Maybe it's time Jessie learned to be her own team captain, relieve you of the responsibility. Marion gets quiet. I hope she's really considering it. Hmm. Let's... If I'm being truthful with myself, Jessie isn't isn't cut out for country living. It's just it's not just her fancy dresses or vogue hairstyle. Rain stops to pick up at a thread pick at a thread on the quilt. She seems to refocus herself. She's tried, bless her, but it's not just the stitching. Everything she turn she cooks turns out to be she turns out too rare. When she weeps, more grime ends up on her than in the dustbin. When she sweeps, not weeps. 
Then there were all the times she tried to milk the cows. I think half the girls tried to give her a swift kick in the head. She must absolutely hate doing domestic things. Those cows sense that, you know. Oh, I'm being ridiculous. You're not. You're being pragmatic. I've always appreciated that about you. Well, I don't blame her. None of us asked for this life. Honestly, I'm glad that Jessie's found something she enjoys. Something she's passionate about. But I wish she understood that we can't just run away from our responsibilities. Is it running away, or is it moving on? Marian rolls the loose thread between her fingertips until it becomes a minute ball, which she tosses aside. Malcolm, we've never had much. But what living we've managed to eke out is because we're a family, a team. We've always had to rely on each other since we couldn't rely on our father. Because he's overseas? Because even when he was here, it felt like he wasn't really here. Not for us. So I've always felt like I had to be their mother figure, because... Her voice chokes, but she continues. Because Father couldn't do it. He couldn't love us in the ways that I thought they deserved, and I kind of hate him for that. Marion stops talking and breathes out. She looks at me as if she's revealed her darkest of secrets. I only hate him in some ways. You have every right to be mad at your father, but you can't protect Grace and Jesse forever. Neither can Owen, nor your mother were she here. What you've done for your sisters will carry them through the rest of their lives. I hesitate, but do, but believe it to be honest. I wish I could say the same about my own mother. I am blessed to have Gran. Everything she has done to raise me, and everything you have done for your sisters has shaped the way we all are now. Strong, brave, and dependent. I dare say you couldn't ask for more, Marion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she looks up, pauses, and gives me a silent hug. When she lets go, I see her face is finally broken into a smile. Mary and I sit, talk, laugh, and heal. Just the two of us, free from obligations of time or duty, together in this wide open space. Oh, and the lights go. The crickets chirp in unison, making a hum buzz noise that echoes across the fields. Eventually, a new sound joins them. My grandmother snores, coming from the bedroom. Hey, Marion. Let's go for a walk. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Well, these two are so lovely together. They pick up the quilts and leave the snores behind us, walking side by side through the grass. Clouds dot the sky, but there's but there's enough moonlight to light our steps. Each time is enough time has passed, I feel like I can finally apologize. Marion, I'm truly sorry what I said to you. For what? For not giving in to my demands? For making you feel like I don't care, because I do, deeply. She looks at me and smiles reassuringly, the moonshine reflecting off her doe eyes. I know I was scared. I let, I let fear overtake me. It's hard to believe I was raised in the church. I give God so little credit. She looks around and whispers to me conspiratorially. You know, I don't think I actually trust him all the time. Scandalous! I think you're right to keep a little mistrust about you. A little skepticism never hurt anyone, right? Well, I trust you. I feel my, teak, I feel my cheeks blush, and I'm glad it's concealed by the darkness. Yeah, yeah, baby. Let's do it. I wrap my arm uh, God, I keep yawning. I wrap my arm around Marion's waist as we walk, and she leans into me, sighing. Hmm. Oh. So pretty. She points to a grassy mound, the same one where we picnic earlier, and we make our way to the spot. I begin to lay the quilts down onto the damp grass side by side when she stops me. One for the ground. One for us. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, what's this? Ooh, that's beautiful. Wow. Like an obedient puppy, I follow our command. We're settling underneath the alders, lying next to each other atop the first quilt. Marion picks up the second and drapes it over both of us. I instinctively pull her close so she can rest her head on my shoulder. The moon drifts in and out and out of cover as a cloud bank rolls in. In the dim light, I can see Marion still broods. I know in my heart Jesse will be safe, successful even. It's just, my sisters and I have nothing left but each other. We ache and struggle to keep the family together, to maintain our farm. You ache, you struggle. So do my sisters. They just do it in the other ways. Their trials are no less harsh than mine. Theirs are simply different. You've been their mother for long enough, perhaps too long. You shouldn't lose yourself to them or hide away in fear every day. I've already lost Jesse. I will lose Grace, too. 
I attack every challenge, every task, every question needing an answer. If a thread is loose, I trim it. If a crumb is strewn, I sweep it away, lest the mice come feast and breed. If a sister has a broken spirit, I should mend it. It's because you care about it. It's because you care that you're so willing to give you to give of yourself. Let yourself be. Give yourself give yourself all that you are prepared to give to them. You are just as deserving. Marion sighs and brushes my forehead with her hand. She whispers, Free real estate. You guys know I can't resist that. Come on. I never can. Be close. Always. Always. Oh. Two are adorable together. She's gonna be a tough nut to crack. A little rain begins to form a mist around us. It gathers on the leaves and branches and falls to our faces. Marion's damp cheeks reflect the rising moonlight. I gather the blankets around us tighter, shielding our heads from the drips. Marion curls into a ball within the crook of my arm. We fall asleep to the calming pitter-patter of water on leaves. Aww. Beautiful music. That bond that formed between Marion and Malcolm that night was one I believed I felt even more deeply than even either of one, than either da, than even either one of them. As I watched on, my tears mingled with the raindrops. They were the product of a dangerous mix of jealousy and empathy brewing within. I wanted to be a part of his world, to be able to experience all the emotions afforded to others around me. I'm betting that's Effie talking. Per perhaps it wasn't meant to be. I told myself I should be happy that Malcolm had become part of this new family. The raindrops still fell. Hmm, I bet that's I bet you that's Effie talking. Not Alana. Anyone else anyone else uh, agree with me on that? Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Hmm. Chapter two, for whom the cowbell tolls. Oh, we're going. Ooh, woo, we're gonna get into some mm, raunchy territory. Guess I'm gonna be down on the farm. <laughs> Gotty. <he. laughs> Ooh, matchmaking. Okay. All right. A week passes, but not a day goes by without me seeing Marion. I feel a responsibility to check in on her regularly now that her sister has left town. In the morning, I stop. In the mornings, I stop by with breakfast biscuits or a daily newspaper, or just about anything I can think of that she or Grace might need. Sometimes, Marion and I only speak briefly—a hello or a thank you. Other times, she has she has longer moments to spare to chat about her day and mine. But mostly, we keep busy with work at home. Now she seems to have recovered from the initial shock of Jesse's departure, times are still tough. Marion has redoubled her efforts on the farm. Whether the extra hard work is a necessity or simply as a necessary distraction, I cannot say. All I know is that I miss those evenings when we could, when we simply would talk, free from all responsibilities. Oh, how I'd love to share another meal together soon. Hmm. I suppose I could just ask, but I'd hate to pressure her to take time away from her routine. At least that is what I tell myself, otherwise I would have to face the truth. That, perhaps, we're now more than just neighbors, more than just friends. That after every visit I think more fondly of Marion. What if I get hurt, or worse, hurt this woman who is becoming dear to my heart? Hmm. Oh god, I can't wait to see what happens. Eventually my grandmother takes notice of my strange behavior. At lunch one day she voices her thoughts. You've seemed nervous these past few days, Malcolm. Is everything all right? <clears throat> yes. I shift in my seat, knowing I'm a ter I'm terrible at lying. Grand saves me the trouble of having to need a cover story. You two are sweet together. Oh, what's that? You and Marion, I see your dot on her. You make a dear couple. Leave it to Grand to be a dining table matchmaker. I I'm not entirely sure that's a a what we are. Then you ought to try harder to become a dear couple. Ha! <laughs> Imagine some of that would be her decision, Gran. No need. Most times a woman makes her mind up first, and the man realizes what the woman has decided, and he accepts it. And Marion has made her mind has made up her mind. And yours. I've seen the way you look at her. More importantly, I see the way she looks at you. She's keen on you, taken to your heart and kindness. I see strength in you both. You ought to make sure she is happy. I trust that you're offering sage advice and not giving me undue hope. Oh, Malcolm, your Gran is want to give only wisdom gathered from lifelong experience. I've got enough time left on God's green earth to give spurious counsel. Anyway, I speak from personal experience. When your grandfather was but a young lad, even younger than yourself, my eye took a fancy to him. Every time I saw him at the stag and nanny. You? 
At the stag and nanny? Of course! I was a barmaid there until I turned 19 and got married. The things we... The things we learn about our grandparents. That's where I met your grandfather. Every night he'd come in and I'd pour him a fresh draught. 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 Whatever. As soon as I set my sights on him, I had a bugger of a time getting him to realize it. But sure as the sun sets in the west, that fellow was going to be all mine. Surely couldn't have taken much convincing a beauty like you. Not convincing, just a bit of attention grabbing, wearing a low cut blouse, swinking a bit too often. Oh my god. Oh, Gran, that's uh, plenty of description. My point is, I found a good, honest, kind, and hard working man. I was going to let him slip away. Now you need to let Marion make your make up your, make make your mind up for you. I mull for a moment. Admittedly, sometimes it takes a perspective of another to see more clearly what's right in front of you. If nothing else, Grand's encouragement helps allay my worries. All right. <clears throat> All right. I shall. Actually, that's a great. Oh my God, it's a great place to stop it. Perfect timing on that one. All right, guys, it's been another episode of Changeling Tale: Marion's Path. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>